So is the Godox V1F the best flash for Fujifilm wedding photographers? Well, it depends. What's up guys, Reggie B Photo here and welcome back to the channel. So for those of you who are new, my name is Reggie Ballesteros and I'm a wedding photographer based in the San Francisco Bay Area. So prior to trying out the Godox V1F, I was using a combination of Yongnuo 660 flashes on camera and 564s off camera with radio triggers. So for those, I was using all manual flash exposure both on camera and off, but after dealing with some sync speed and reliability issues on my XE3s with the Yongnuo flashes after about 10 months of shooting weddings, I decided that enough was enough. Since almost everyone in the Fujifilm community raves about the Godox system of flashes, I wanted to see if the hype was real. Luckily, a Godox reseller called EM Great reached out to me. Initially, they were trying to have me test out some of their new Godox AC powered monolights, but after telling them that I was a wedding photographer and on location shooter um, and having troubles and issues with my Young Newell flashes, they were kind enough to send me a Godox V1F as well as the XT2F trigger um, in order to test out at my weddings and engagement sessions. And to clarify, they didn't pay me and they didn't require me to say anything specific. This is going to be my true honest take on the Godox V1F and the Godox system overall and how it fits into the Fujifilm X-T3 and my specific wedding photography workflow. So is it the best Fujifilm flash for everybody? Probably not. Is it the best Fujifilm flash for my wedding photography? Well, spoiler alert, I did order another one. Actually, the Flashpoint version, which is right over back there. And I also have two 8200s coming on the way very soon. But that's not to say that the V1F doesn't have its flaws. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what I thought about the flash. But before that, I'm going to talk to you guys how I actually use the Godox V1F on the different parts of the wedding day as well as engagement photography. I use this flash in five different ways. So the first way is the standard on-camera bounce. Um, I point it slightly behind or to the side, um, and this is pretty much my go-to situation for any run-in gun lighting where there is a ceiling or a wall right next to me. The next way is on-camera with a rogue flash bender, which is this crazy thing. So I basically use this setup for any time that I am shooting an outdoor wedding or wedding with very, very high ceilings inside for the reception or if the reception venue has very dark blacked out ceilings. This is what I'm going to use to get better on camera light um, and still have it flexible to be on camera as opposed to on a stand. So the next way is using the V1F as an on-camera master for my off-camera flashes. And sometimes I use the on-camera V1F as a fill, and sometimes I also use it with the Rogue Flash Bender as another fill source. I'd also like to take the time to note that the Godox V1 is actually my first Godox flash that I've ever tried out. I don't really have experience in the past with using the 862 on camera. While I do use the 862s off camera for most of these example photos, that's only because I borrowed it from a friend who had some Canon versions that he wasn't using anymore. That way I could test out the full capabilities of the V1F as an on camera flash as well as an on camera master for off camera flash units. The next way is just direct fire straight forward for dance floor and party shots. And the last way that I use it is for engagement shoots in conjunction with the X-T2F radio trigger and having the V1F on a small nano stand for on location portrait shoots. So now before I get into my thoughts about the V1F, how it works, the quality of light and all that stuff, I did want to make a small note that I shoot all my flashes in manual flash exposure only. So I don't have any thoughts or experience or observations about how accurate or how good the TTL works, mainly because I just don't shoot that way. So if you have any questions about TTL consistency, the power and all that stuff and how it meters, unfortunately I can't offer information on that. So the first burning question, especially for you guys who are 862 users is, does the round head of the Godox V1F actually make a difference in terms of the quality of light? And the truth is for me personally, I really have not noticed and that wasn't really the main factor of me trying out and landing on the V1F as my main Fujifilm on camera flash for wedding photography. So while I'm sure that the direct fire flash beam is a little bit more pleasing and it might even be more pleasing for bounce flash since the beam is going to be round as opposed to rectangular oval depending on how far the ceiling or the wall is, I just really haven't noticed anything different. It's bounce flash is bounce flash and direct fire flash still looks like direct fire flash to me uh, without any modifiers. 
when it comes to flash and off-camera flash and just lighting in general, the size of the light source is always going to dictate the quality of light. And for me, that's why I use this Rogue Flash Bender because this size is a bigger difference than this size of the light in comparison to the 862's just rectangular flash head. So the size difference between these two is not as much as the size difference between these two. So again, this is gonna be a bigger light source, which is why I use that to impact the quality of the light for any time I'm using the on-camera flash at direct fire, which is actually the least recommended way to shoot with flash. I also haven't had any experience using any of the magnetic filters because I think that's the biggest draw for having the round head is that you can use the magnetic filters and modifiers and gels and whatnot that Godox makes. I haven't got to try it out just yet. Currently I've been just taping gels to all my on-camera flashes because that's the only modifier I use on camera. So now let's talk about the positives and negatives of using the Godox V1F for my wedding photography specifically and also how it compares to my previous performance of the Yang Nuo flashes that I was using in the past. So the first and most important positive is the flash consistency and reliability. I'm now able to use the maxing speed of the X-T3, which is 1 over 2 50th of a second. Prior to that, when I was using Yang Nuo's, I had to drop it down to 1 over 1 25th of a second in order to not get any banding, even though 1 over 2 50 was the sync speed. And in conjunction with that, also, I was getting a lot of misfires just all the time when I was using the Fujifilm system with the Yang Nuo flashes. I'm not sure it was because I was doing that weird thing where I was triggering triggers where I basically had the YN 660 as the master triggering a I think it's called the RF 605 and that RF 605 triggered the 560 TX and that 560 TX triggered the 564s. Um, I explained it a little bit in my wedding photography kit video which you can check out but it was just kind of a weird thing that I was doing. But now with Godox I've essentially eliminated the middleman trigger so to speak and I just use the V1F to talk directly to the 862s that are used um, and also I'm going to use them to talk directly to the 8200s that I have on order currently. The next big thing and probably the main reason why I chose the V1F over the 862s is going to be the menu controls and button layout. So not only does it have a multi-line readout like the 862 did, but it also has dedicated buttons to control each flash group to turn them on and off quickly, to change the power on and off quickly. And this is immensely powerful and useful for my type of wedding photography where I'm trying to move around the dance floor, turn off different lights and turn them on, change the powers and all that stuff and being able to change these all on the fly very, very quickly. So there are definitely some other side benefits that aren't really necessary for my workflow, but they do help out as far as convenience goes. And the first one is the lithium ion battery. I don't have to use my crazy 12 cell Eneloop charger anymore. So I'm just basically charging each flash by itself. And I do like that the Godox E1 just has a USB port charging thing. So it basically, ca I can charge it along with the multi-port USB chargers that I currently have. As far as battery life goes, I've never had to switch them out during a wedding at this point. So one cool thing is that this V1F actually has the ability to tilt the flash head backwards. Um, when I'm doing bounce flash, I'm always pointing it back and either to one side or to the other all the time if I'm not pointing it directly to the side at a wall. So having it point backwards is pretty awesome because you have the full flexibility and you can point it to both sides. Some flashes you have to like go one way and then turn the other way because it doesn't have full 360 rotation. So the biggest negative that I have, and it's one negative that I'm not sure why no one talks about this when they recommend the Fujifilm flash system. I think I have a hunch. I think it's because most people shoot TTL and nobody really shoots manual flash exposure. So they don't notice that this is a big issue, but it's, it's a pretty big issue. And I think it's one of the biggest issues of using the Godox line of flashes with Fujifilm in general is that there's a big flaw as far as using off camera manual flash and getting the full frames per second out of the camera. So in order to explain the main issue is that for some reason the Fujifilm cameras when you shoot them to trigger something that's off camera they always have to send a TTL input no matter what even if the on camera flash is set to manual and you can kind of figure this out by going in the menu of the camera if you go to the menu and go to the flash setting even if you have the off camera trigger set to manual if you try to go into the flash menu and change it from TTL because it's going to be in TTL it just never goes back to manual it just always wants to be in TTL so I think this flaw right here because it's always programmed in TTL if you're in a situation where you want to lower the flash power 
in order to shoot off as many high frames per second bursts. Basically, the Fujifilm Flash just by default will not let you shoot high frames per second burst off camera without any type of menu changes. This is it set normally. I have the C channel, which is right behind me right here, um, set to 1 1 28th power. Actually, you know what? Let's set it a little bit lower. 1 2 56 of a power. So it should go off very, very fast in manual. So I have it on continuous high right now, and I have it set to mechanical shutter 11 frames per second. So I have everything set right as far as the drive goes. But if you hold it down and you try to shoot off 11 frames per second burst, it's just not going to go. So that's, that's kind of close to like a little bit faster than three frames per second. So the reason why it's doing that is because the camera thinks that the on-camera flash is in TTL and basically it's doing all the through the lens flash exposures even though it's just trying to trigger a manual input signal. Just fire the flash. That's all it really needs to do, but it's telling you this is the TTL calculation, fire the flash, even though again, I said I have the off-camera flash set to manual. So what you have to do is with one of the function buttons, I might choose this top one right here. You basically press display back right here. I'm gonna set the top one to TTL lock. And basically once you set it to TTL lock and you press the button, engage TTL lock, which you're gonna see right next to the shutter speed. And now you'll see that now I'm able to at one over 256 of a power, shoot the full 11 frames per second burst without missing a step. And I think that's a big issue that you have to manually change your camera in order to do that. It should just know it's in manual flash, just like every other camera brand out there and just work like that. But there's a workaround, there's a fix for it. I've never once heard anybody mention that issue in any review that I've seen. And I've also never seen anybody mention that issue when they're recommending it as the best flash for Fujifilm at this point. So biggest negative that I have, I think it's a firmware fix way either on Fujifilm side or Godox side, somebody needs to fix it because this isn't a workaround that we should be doing every time we shoot manual flash. It's unacceptable in my opinion. So the next negative is it just kind of like poorly balances on a non-grip X-T3. Um, and this actually goes the same for the H62 as well. It's just not really made to balance well on a smaller mirrorless camera. I think the best balanced flash at this point is the TT350F or the V350F. Those are very, very nice. And they're actually the better flash for most people that are not using anything crazy like high reception ceilings or doing a lot of events and that stuff. And you could probably get away with the TT350 for smaller events or just, you know, events to have a very, very short ceiling. And I guess my next negative is the, the price difference. I think it's like $80 more than the 862 without any power difference. If there wasn't the increase in like the menu functionality, I wouldn't have gone with the V1F at all. I guess there is the added benefit of getting to use the magnetic modifiers if that's something that you're into. Um, but again, that's also an added cost too. So again, the cost to like power ratio is not very good and it's not in favor of the V1F. Um, the 862 is gonna be the better bang for your buck when it comes to just like pound for pound cost to flash power if you're looking for an on-camera master flash or bounce flash. So who is the V1 F4? And I guess I also want to make some recommendations on what each type of photographer might need as far as flash goes. So if you're like me and you do a mix of off-camera flash mastering as well as run and gun on camera at the same time as the main light or the fill light, the V1F really comes in key with its menu functionality, its ability to change different channels and power and all that stuff in the groups um, with just a few button clicks as opposed to the 862, which I've heard just really does not have a good menu system for on the fly power adjustments for different groups like ABC and all that stuff. If you do that, again, off-camera flash and on-camera mastering, um, then the V1F really fits the bill and it's why I chose it as my main on-camera flash for my wedding photography. If you're doing on-camera flash only, it's really going to be a toss-up. If you care about like on-camera modifiers and all that stuff, then I guess the V1F would be advantageous at that point because then you can take advantage of cheaper modifiers than the mag mods. But I think most people will be better served with either the 862 or the 350, depending on what kind of flash power you need. For events and all that stuff, like weddings, the 860 is definitely gonna give you more power. But for smaller situations, just around the house, or if you're getting started with flash, the TT350 is more than enough for most situations. And if you're like all OCF, you're doing all off-camera stuff, I think if you're looking for more bang for your buck, it's gonna be the 862, or if you need more power, the AD200, just purely off-camera, is gonna give you a lot more power for how much you 
you pay. And for most cases, the round head um, adapter is gonna be kind of like a non-factor if you're doing off-camera flash either far away. And then when you get really, really close, you're probably gonna be using a different modifier anyways instead of just a bare head. I'm thinking the 862 or the AD200 are gonna be better for off-camera only use. So that kind of wraps it up for my V1F review. I do wanna ask you guys if you wanna see a kind of video on my methodology for dialing in my flash exposure and balancing that with ambient lighting, um, let me know down in the comments below if you want to see that. Um, if you can get 200 comments down below, I'm going to make that video. Um, I have a pretty quick way that I do that in reception spaces or indoor spaces. Um, let me know in the comments below that you want to see that. Please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I make a new Fujifilm or photography video like these two every other week. And if you want to see more of my photo work, please follow me on Instagram at at photo for a new post every single day. All right, that's it for me. Remember to get out, go shoot, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.